the war in Ukraine has become a competition between Russian weapons and those of Western countries. The first significant discovery was the inability of Russian air defense systems S-300 and S-400 to shoot down HIMARS missiles. And here is why. The fact is that this American system does not fire rockets as such, but missiles. A missile differs from a rocket in flying at different trajectories and speeds. And Russian anti-aircraft systems were created primarily against aerodynamic targets. They can shoot down aircraft or large cruise missiles, such as the Russian Kaliber or ballistic missiles. But they cannot shoot down missiles used in HIMARS. There is only one air defense system in the world capable of doing this – Israel's Iron Dome system. Israeli engineers developed it specifically to protect against rocket artillery. Russia has been touting its S-300 and S-400 systems for years, attributing superpowers to them. All this was done to sell them abroad profitably. They even managed to sell them to Turkey. Turkey is a member of NATO, but fell for Russian propaganda by buying several S-400 systems. This war deals an irreparable blow to the Russian military-industrial complex. Many types of Russian weapons were not as cool as they were considered. In a real war, any weapon takes the test. For example, Russian tanks proved to be very vulnerable against Western NLAW and Javelin anti-tank systems. Before the attack in Ukraine, the Russians prepared their tanks by installing some kind of reinforced protection above the turret. But it didn't help. Russian tanks explode like tin cans. The towers are torn off with such force that they get off tens of meters into the air as if they were made of paper. And here is the video where the NLAW hit warhead pierces through a Russian tank. You will not see it even in the movies, but this is reality. As for the American HIMARS launchers, they show the massive superiority over their Russian counterparts – Uragan, Smerch and Tos. Ukrainian artillerists use HIMARS very delicately. They work like a surgeon with scalpel. They have already destroyed over 50 Russian ammunition depots and dozens of other large targets and hit strategic bridges behind enemy lines with high accuracy. This video shows how accurately the Ukrainian laid shells on the bridge. The shells hit the bridge not randomly, but along one lane and at the same distance from each other. Russia has no weapon that could repeat such a masterpiece. Russian multiple launch rocket systems have proven to be very outdated. In modern warfare they have several shortcomings. First, they don't know what an accurate hit is. Their target deviation fluctuates by hundreds of meters. They are forced to cover huge areas to destroy the target, and because of this, they consume a lot of projectiles. See how Ukrainian fields look because of this, like a sieve. This means that thousands of shells are wasted. Secondly, Russian launchers are very bulky and difficult to use. For example, the Smerge system is aimed at the target by the old optical method, while the Hammer system is aimed using the tablet and the missiles fly according to GPS coordinates, hitting the target directly. One Ukrainian military said that the HIMARS missile is so accurate that it could hit a house chimney. As a result, to hit a large target, the Russian military is forced to spend hundreds of shells, and HIMARS can spend one or more missiles. Thirdly, Russian smerge systems require 40 minutes to recharge fully. They even have a special charging machine for this, which brings missiles. But rockets are still loaded manually. In comparison, Western HIMARS or MLRS-270 systems recharge in 5 minutes and do not require an additional charging machine. HIMARS are also more mobile and faster than heavy Russian vehicles. The most terrible weapon of Russia is the MLRS TOS, a heavy flamethrowing system. The Russians use it to launch thermobaric projectiles at Ukrainian positions. Fortunately, its range is not great, only 7 km. But this system causes the most significant casualties among the Ukrainian soldiers in close combat with the Russians. These projectiles are almost impossible to defend against. See what shelling from the TOS system looks like. Upon hitting the target, the first explosive charge opens the container and sprays the combustible mixture in the form of a cloud. This cloud can penetrate any openings in buildings or defenses that are not hermetically sealed. The second charge ignites the cloud, resulting in a huge fireball, a powerful blast wave and a vacuum that consumes all surrounding oxygen. 
This weapon can destroy fortified buildings, equipment and kill or injure people. There is practically no chance of survival for soldiers sitting in the trenches. Therefore, Ukrainians try to destroy this weapon at every opportunity, and sometimes even manage to capture it for themselves. Meanwhile, Russia continues to bombard Ukraine with Kaliber, Iskander and air-to-ground missiles. Therefore, Ukraine expects to receive American Patriot air defense systems and Norwegian NASAMS shortly. The Norwegian anti-aircraft missile system NASAMS is considered one of the best in the world. That is what the White House in Washington uses to protect itself. I think that when they are delivered to Ukraine, Russian missiles will no longer have any chance. Even now, with the help of old Soviet air defense systems, Ukrainians can shoot down up to 50% of all Russian missiles. And on August 2nd, 7 out of the 8 missiles fired were shot down. Russia is increasingly threatening to destroy the so-called decision centers in Ukraine. In other words, they threaten to fire rockets at President Zelensky office and other government buildings in Kyiv. That is why Ukraine wants to receive NASAMS anti-aircraft systems as soon as possible. The Ukrainian counteroffensive will be a decisive stage in this war. It has already begun, but preparations are underway so far. Ukraine is destroying the logistics and ammunition stocks of the Russians, and in the meantime it collects a mighty fist from armored vehicles. If the Ukrainians manage to liberate at least Kherson, this will strongly demoralize the Russian army. After all, they still think they are invincible. I would really like to see how Putin will explain to the Russians the loss of the conquered territories. After all, he will have to admit defeat to the Ukrainian army. Please also watch my video about why Ukrainians want to destroy the Crimean Bridge.